Hello, welcome to lecture 3 of module 3. This is lecture number 9 of the course. We are now prepared to discuss quantum entanglement measures. As you know, in the early days of quantum mechanics, quantum entanglement was considered to be a qualitative feature of quantum mechanics. However, after Bell's discovery of Bell's inequality, quantum entanglement got a distinctive quantitative uh, feature. Today, there are many quantum entanglement measures and in this lecture we are uh, in this lecture and uh, subsequent lectures we are going to discuss some of the quantum entanglement measures. However, before that, first let me tell you very briefly what is exactly quantum entanglement measure is. Uh, but even before that, let me remind you very quickly what is quantum entanglement again. So as we know that entanglement is the characteristic trait of quantum mechanics. Say HA and HP be to finite dimensional Hilbert space and there is a state vector psi which belongs to the composite Hilbert space HA uh, direct product HP. Then this state vector psi is said to be disentanglement separable or a product state if there exists a state belonging to the Hilbert space of A and Hilbert another state, uh, state vector psi B, k psi B belonging to the Hilbert space HP such that I can write the composite state vector as a product state vector of the uh, state k A, uh, psi A and psi B. If I can do that then k psi is said to be uh, product state or separable that means not entangled on the other hand if I cannot do that as you know then this state vector psi is said to be entangled this was in the context of a uh, pure state we can do the same thing with the mixed state also only thing is that in the case of mixed state rather than a state vector we will define the quantum state by a density matrix rho and if there is a density matrix belonging to the Hilbert space of A and Hilbert space of B, then if I can write the uh, composite density matrix of the system, composite system as a product of the density matrix corresponding to the system A and system B, then uh, the A and B is said to be not entangled because they are now separable. On the other hand, if I cannot write the composite density matrix as a product of the respective density matrix of the uh, system A and B, then rho is said to be entanglement. So this must basic things already by now it should be clear to all of uh, us. Now the question is uh, why we need quantum entanglement measures. First of all, it is the key ingredient of quantum information and quantum communication. It also serves as a basically quantum entanglement measure serve as an essential basis for quantum computing and cryptography. An entangled system is a necessary tool for information transfer because the process involves information sharing without any hidden interception, which is basically the need uh, that is why quantum cryptography is so popular uh, because this uh, hidden interception is not possible uh, if we use quantum cryptography. Now entanglement can be used as a resource just like we use energy. So suppose you are given a state and a tax that consume entanglement. The question that we can ask is that how much we can achieve, how well we can do and this is usually these questions can be answered usually by a quantification of entanglement uh, entanglement or some quantum uh, entanglement measure protocols now what is the technical definition of quantum entanglement measure an entanglement measure which is generally denoted by the symbol e is a functional that takes a quantum state of a multi-partite system to a non-negative 
real number i think this issue would be more clearer when i will uh, discuss some quantum entanglement measures later on now here in this expression here this d of h is the set of density operators on the hilbert space and we are going to discuss quantum entanglement measure mainly in the context of a bipartite system like this okay now a list of axioms has to be is given here which uh, has to be satisfied by entanglement measures mostly and first of all a bipartite entanglement measure is a mapping from density matrices into a positive real number as uh, we showed in the last uh, slide there and if the entanglement measure is zero e rho is equal to zero that means the state rho is separable so if the uh, state is basically entanglement a bipartite system is entanglement you are always going to get e rho this entanglement measure is going to be a finite number it is not going to be zero and this entanglement measure e does not increase on the average under locc local quantum operational classical communication for a pure state uh, rho the measure reduces to the entropy of entanglement which we are going to discuss in uh, today's class next uh, apart from this you see any function e satisfying the first three condition is known as entanglement monotone so out of all this uh, four that already i discussed if these first three properties are satisfied there is called uh, that entanglement measure is also called entanglement monotone and the term entanglement measure will be used for any quantity that satisfy the axioms this axiom first one that means the bipartite entanglement measure ep is a mapping from density matrix to a positive real number second one is that e rho is equal to zero if rho is separable and the fourth one for pure state rho uh, the measure reduces to the entropy at entanglement and also if the entanglement that means the measure does not increase under deterministic LOCC transformation then uh, that particular E capital E that this particular term here is going to be called uh, entanglement measure. Now in this uh, course uh, in particular in the this particular lecture and the next one we are going to discuss entanglement measures like von Neumann entropy positive partial transpose uh, criterion or measure which is called in short ppt then there is another measure called negativity and uh, analogous a similar one is the so-called logarithmic negativity concurrence and so on are going to be discussed the first quantum entanglement measure that i'm going to discuss now is the uh, entropy of quantum entanglement also known as von neumann entropy already those who have studied physics have encountered entropy uh, in the context of thermodynamics or maybe some of you have got that in classical statistical mechanics as well so let me first uh, revisit very quickly and briefly uh, the concept of entropy in the context of classical statistical mechanics entropy is generally known as a measure of disorder in a system and this all of us know that entropy is a measure of disorder in a system entropy was first of all discovered in thermodynamics and in classical statistical mecha mechanics it is given by this expression or formula s is equal to kb logarithm of omega where s is the entropy kb is the so called boltzmann constant it's boltzmann constant and omega is the number of number of microstates in a system in a system okay to give you a quick and simple example let us consider uh, three states of water water can be in three states as we know it can be in say ice that's the solid state and the liquid state is water and then we have a so-called vapor state so these are the three 
state of water now in the case of ice you know the molecules uh, in ice have to stay in a lattice as it is a rigid system so ice has a low entropy it has a low entropy on the other hand molecules has uh, uh, more uh, positions in the case of water right so uh, i mean to say that uh, molecules in water has uh, more positions to move around so molecules in water has uh, more entropy than uh, than ice so it has higher entropy or more entropy than that of ice uh, and finally uh, what does it basically means that means uh, in molecules in water has more number of microstates than that of ice because it has more space to move on on the other hand in the case of vapor molecules inside the vapor can pretty much go anywhere they want so water vapor has high entropy it has the higher entropy than that of uh, water right then uh, then water so then water and uh, in other words it it means that the number of microstates in vapor is greater than of the a number of microstates in water so therefore out of all these three states uh, then we can write uh, that as regards the microstates are concerned we can write that the number of microstates in vapor is greater than to the number of microstates in water and the uh, number of microstates in water is greater than that of the number of microstates in ice which basically means that the entropy of vapor is greater than the entropy of water and entropy of water is greater than that of the entropy of ice so this expression uh, s is equal to kb logarithm of omega uh, this is as i said this is called gibbs entropy uh, and this was discussed in thermodynamics and classical statistical mechanics actually in classical statistical mechanics it was discovered and this expression can be written in terms of probability as well s is equal to say minus kb uh, summation pi logarithm of pi this is another way to write uh, express this equation number one so let me say this is equation number two here this pi uh, is the probability pi is the probability of uh, obtaining obtaining the ith microstate obtaining the ith microstates actually uh, i can obtain uh, equation one uh, from equation uh, two and to do that uh, let me show you how to do that in a very simplified manner it's a oversimplification let us say there are n number of microstates or omega number of uh, number of microstates are there so i'm going to obtain equation number one from two so for that i am assuming say let n number of microstates are there in a system microstates are there in a system and all of them are equally probable and all of them are that means getting getting any one of them one of the microstates any one of the microstates is equal that means the corresponding probability that means getting any microstate any uh, that means just let us take ith microstate so it would be given by the probability would be one by omega right K capital omega which is the number of microstates so this means i can write this expression s b s is equal to minus k b uh, summation uh, i 
sum over i pi logarithm of pi i can write it as minus kb summation i pi is 1 by capital omega logarithm of uh, 1 by omega so this is going to give me kb uh, you see what i am going to get uh, because of all this thing is that uh, this should be n by omega logarithm of 1 would be 0 so therefore i will have simply logarithm of omega okay and uh, n is equal to omega by the way right n is equal to omega so therefore i get kb logarithm of omega so this was the original expression right this is equation number one so this formula s is equal to minus kb sum over i pi logarithm of pi we write in the context of classical statistical mechanics which is known as gibbs entropy taking clue from gibbs entropy claudes senon claude senon an information theorist in 1948 introduced uh, the following formula for entropy in the context of information theory the formula was s is equal to minus summation p of x logarithm of p of x where this summation uh, denotes the sum over the possible values of the random variable x and p of x is the probability of the outcome probability probability of outcome associated associated with the random variable x and uh, as you can see in this formula the boltzmann constant kb is uh, no longer there uh, because you know we are now discussing uh, entropy in the context of information theory not in the context of thermodynamics and entropy here is a measure of uncertainty or surprise inherent to possible outcomes of the variables in information theory entropy is used to quantify the degree of correlation between systems and correlation is a measure of information when two systems say a and b are correlated we can ask how much information of a is contained in b or vice versa in a way senon's entropy function is a measure of the uncertainty contained in a system described by random variables this idea of Senon entropy is extended to quantum information theory by von Neumann and it is known as von Neumann entropy. You know that uh, the state of a quantum system is described by density matrix. So quite necessarily, the expression for von Neumann entropy also contains, uh, is a basically is a function of density matrices as we will now see. Von Neumann entropy is given by this formula s of rho where rho is the density matrix s is the entropy now we are discussing entropy in the context of quantum mechanics so uh, entropy is a function of the density matrix as i said it is given by this formula trace over the function rho log rho where rho is the density matrix as i said in fact it can be shown that this formula can be obtained from the Xenon formula which is minus summation over the indices i uh, rho uh, not rho it's probability pi log of pi where pi is the probability of getting the state vector psi i okay so this is the formula and in fact uh, we can show 
that uh, we can write the entropy von Neumann entropy formula in this form also minus sum over lambda i log lambda i where lambda i are the eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of the density matrix row okay this is a very important and it it's it's kind of a very useful because uh, for many problems uh, or quantification purpose we will see it is we can use this formula we just need to find out the eigenvalues of the density matrix and then we can just use this formula to calculate the entropy now one thing one should notice that entropy in physics is defined using Nesserel logarithm while in information theory logarithm base is used to be 2. Now let me explain uh, the formula for von Neumann entropy a little bit more clearly. You know that the density operator is defined like this summation pk or say pi whatever psi k uh, k psi bra psi this is the definition of density matrix and if we choose the eigenbasis of the density operator we can express this uh, in this form we can write it because it's a matrix density operator or density it's a matrix so we can use the spectral decomposition and in using spectral decomposition we know we just have to find out the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvector suppose the eigenvalues are lambda j and the corresponding eigenvectors are kj like this then this is basically the spectral decomposition and we can express the density matrix in this particular form so in simple words uh, let me reiterate that we just have to find the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of the density matrix and write it in a convenient form this way we can express rho as a diagonal matrix because you see we will have we can express the density matrix uh, as a diagonal matrix having the eigenvalues along the diagonal up to lambda n where lambda n is the uh, you know where basically capital n is the dimension of the hilbert space we are dealing with and d is a diagonal matrix in the basis of kj let us put this expression in the von neumann entropy formula and see what we will get von neumann entropy formula s rho is equal to minus trace rho log rho now if i put the expression for rho rho is equal to sum over i lambda i ket i bra i and then we have here log and again we have say let me use another in this j lambda j ket j bra j ket j bra j okay this is what i have i can now write it as minus trace sum over i lambda i ket i bra i let me take the summation here sum j logarithm i can take inside log of lambda j ket j bra j from here i can write minus trace sum over i sum over z lambda i log of lambda z ket i bra i this is the inner product i z of i and z and bra z as you can see now this guy is nothing but the Kronecker delta ij and using this Kronecker delta property we can now write minus trace sum over i lambda i log of lambda i 
get i bra i and from here finally uh, i can write minus summation over i lambda i log of lambda i trace over get i bra i and therefore i get minus sum over i lambda i log of lambda i because trace over this quantity is identity so therefore we get the entropy as von neumann entropy is given by this expression now i hope it is clear to you that von neumann entropy formula we can now write let me write it once again the von neumann entropy formula trace over rho log rho can be written as minus sum over i lambda i log of lambda i where lambda i's are the eigenvalues of the density matrix rho as you can see the von neumann entropy is a function function of from the expression you can see it's a function of minus lambda logarithm of lambda now here lambda lies between 0 and 1 because lambda are the eigenvalues of the density matrix and you know the diagonal elements of the density matrix gives us the uh, probabilities and probability cannot exceed 1 so lambda has to lie between 0 and 1 now if you look at the function as you see as lambda tends to 0 the function minus lambda logarithm of lambda tends to 0 and if lambda tends to 1 this function minus lambda logarithm of lambda also tends to 0 and it has a maximum value this function is a maximum value at lambda is equal to 1 by e and the value you can calculate and it is also uh, 1 by e in fact we can uh, draw a plot of this function minus lambda logarithm of lambda versus the eigenvalue lambda and eigenvalue lies between 0 and 1 and we can we'll get a value it says a maximum at 1 by e and maximum value is 1 by e so let us say this is the point so therefore we are going to get a plot like this so this clearly shows one fact that the entropy has a lower bound uh, that is it uh, cannot be less than zero right this is what uh, first lesson we have learned about the property of the von neumann entropy now another thing is that if the system is in pure state say a system is in pure state and if it is in a pure state that means we can have a uh, we can definitely describe the system by a k psi we have this is the pure state and only we have only this particular state and in that case we have just one non-zero eigenvalue and that is equal to one so therefore immediately you see the corresponding um, entropy quantum uh, entropy would be uh, von Neumann entropy is going to be zero so we can conclude that the entropy entropy of a pure state of a pure state is zero so this is uh, important that entropy of a pure state is zero so we have seen that the von Neumann entropy is bounded from below by zero and it can be actually proved that von neumann entropy has a maximum value s rho has a maximum value that means it has a upper bound it is uh, has a, a upper bound or a maximum value if the hilbert space is finite if the hilbert space hilbert space is finite now i'm just going to mention you the result here if the hilbert space is has a dimension say d then the the value of the entropy the maximum value of the entropy s max rho is equal to logarithm of d 
So therefore, what we can say about von Neumann entropy for a finite dimensional Hilbert space is that the von Neumann entropy lies between 0 and logarithm of d where d is the dimension of the Hilbert space. Von Neumann entropy can be used to quantify quantum entanglement and the reason is very simple. When two system say A and B are entangled, neither A let me just explain it uh, by writing here say a and b the subsystem a and b are entangled so this means this implies that neither a nor b is in a definite quantum state in a definite quantum state okay because we have a loss of information about uh, the systems we cannot know everything about a and we cannot know everything about b without involving the other subsystems so in this case what we can do say as regards the measurement is concerned if subsystem if subsystem uh, a and b are entangled entangled if subsystem a and subsystem b are entangled entangled there is going to be loss of information or uncertainty in the information so therefore if you calculate the density matrix or the reduced density matrix for the subsystem a and calculate its entropy then you are definitely going to get a non-zero value of the entropy i think this is easy to understand because there is a loss of information or uncertainty in the information is there similarly for the subsystem b you can find out the density operator for the subsystem b and calculates the corresponding uh, entropy uh, von neumann entropy then you will find that it is going to give you a non-zero value now let me illustrate uh, this concept uh, by giving you an example. Let us consider uh, again the Hilbert space of A and B and uh, say the a particular state is given in this Hilbert space by this k uh, vector uh, or state vector 1 by root 2 1 0 minus 1 0. Suppose this is the uh, state vector we are having representing the composite system a and b and now we are asked to decide whether the subsystems a and b are entangled and to do that we can express this k state k psi as a, a superposition state like this in the computational basis we can write it as 1 by root 2 uh, k 0 0 minus k 1 0 because if you remember k 0 0 in the computational basis is uh, you know given by this column vector 1 0 0 0 uh, and 1 0 is given by this column vector 0 0 1 0 right therefore we can express this state vector in a column in this particular form and this will help us to write down the corresponding density operator very quickly density operator for the composite system would be a half k 0 0 bra 0 0 minus k 0 0 bra 1 0 minus k 1 0 bra 0 0 plus k 1 0 bra 1 0 okay and now just we have already done so many problems you can find out the density operator for the subsystem a by tracing out b from here and this will give you half k0 bra 0 minus k0 bra 1 minus k1 bra 0 plus k1 bra 1 and in matrix form i can write it as half 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 similarly i can get the reduced density matrix for the system b 
would be equal to we have to here trace out a then i will also get here half 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 now the entanglement entropy for the subsystem a would be s rho of a would be equal to minus trace of rho a logarithm of rho a and this is equal to minus sum over lambda i log lambda i with base 2 lambda i are the eigenvalues and you can easily work out the eigenvalues of rho a eigenvalues of rho a you can find as lambda 1 is equal to 0 and lambda 2 is equal to 1 and from here you can immediately get that entanglement entropy would be equal to simply 0 similarly you will get entanglement entropy for subsystem b is also going to be 0 so this uh, basically implies that a and b the uh, a and b are are not entangled are not entangled and that means their system is the state the state representing the uh, the system subsystem a and b are separable okay so this is the lesson we get you can try this exercise for another state say k psi is equal to 1 by say 1 by root 2 1 0 0 1 and i urge you to do it and in this case you will find you will find that the subsystem a and b are not entangled because you will find that the entropy of entanglement with respect to system a would turn out to be non-zero and s rho b if, if you calculate you will find it to be also non-zero so the system a and b will be uh, entangled let us now discuss about another entanglement criterion and measure this criterion is called ppt criterion ppt criterion and it's the short form of positive partial transpose positive partial transpose criterion it is also known as Peris Horodeki criterion. However, I am going to refer to it as PPT criterion only. This criterion states that this criterion states that if the state of a composite system if the state of a composite system is separable is separable then then the partial transpose of the density operator of the density operator with respect to with respect to one subsystem is positive or basically it's a valid density density matrix if i take the partial transpose so first of all let me uh, explain what I mean by partial transpose to give you a very trivial example by the way before I go there uh, this is a very important criterion and this is actually a necessary and sufficient condition for 
separability it is a necessary and sufficient condition condition for separability in the context of a bipartite system in particular uh, now to explain what is partial transpose let me give you a a very trivial example let us say what is partial transpose so let us say we have a system a and its density operator is represented by rho a is equal to one zero 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 and the another subsystem b is represented by the density operator rho b is equal to say one by four three by four two i minus two i and let us say this system a and b are separable then i can write it in this form rho is equal to rho a tensor product rho b now the partial transpose over that of system b would be given by taking the partial transpose over the density operator representing the system b only right without touching the system a and rho a is equal to it remains same one zero 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 but if i take the partial transpose of the uh, matrix density matrix rho b i just have to rows would become column uh, 1 by 4 2 i it would become column 1 by 4 2 i here and this column will become a this row will become a column so you will have this minus 2 i 3 by 4 okay this is what i uh, what we mean by uh, transpose partial transpose over the top system b we can do the similar thing over system a also rho t a would be uh, basically taking the partial transpose over the system a subsystem a and density matrix for the subsystem b would remain unaffected more technically say the density matrix element of a composite system a plus b is given in the orthonormal basis uh, by this say rho i z these are the density matrix element for the density uh, operator or the density matrix rho then uh, we can write uh, this as in the orthonormal basis of hilbert space of a and b would be like this phi a is the uh, hilbert space uh, dense orthonormal basis uh, belonging to hilbert space of a and phi b is the orthonormal basis belonging to the hilbert space of b and here i have phi a k and phi b l now taking partial transpose of rho partial transpose of rho with respect to say subsystem b means that the indices that belong to the system b is getting interchange without changing the indices belonging to the system a now here you see i belongs to a and k belongs to the subsystem a and j belongs to the subsystem b l belongs to the subsystem b and while taking transpose we are not going to interchange the indices belonging to subsystem a but indices belonging to subsystem b is going to change so this is what we are going to get right so this is what we mean by taking partial transpose with respect to system b here now suppose the density matrix rho takes this separable form rho is equal to sum over i p i rho a i tensor product with uh, rho b i this is a separable state and here when we say partial trace is taken over system b this means that the density operator uh, corresponding to the system a 
is remain unaffected and users take the partial transpose over the density matrix uh, belonging to the system B right this is what we mean so let's say this is my equation one and this is my equation number two now you have to note one thing that if the system is or the density operator row is separable this implies as per the ppt criterion that row tb is a valid uh, density matrix valid density matrix because row is separable as per ppt criterion this we must have ppt criterion and what i mean by valid density matrix that means that uh, row tb is semi positive definite it is semi positive definite or simply a positive matrix or that means that the eigenvalues all the eigenvalues of row tb is uh, non-negative non-negative it cannot be negative if row tb is not a valid density matrix it's not a valid density matrix it implies that uh, row is not separable not separable or it implies that the subsystem the subsystems a and b are entangled are entangled let me explain this by a simple example consider this composite system uh, of a and b represented by this gate say we have 1 by root 2 gate 0 0 plus gate 1 1 we already know this is an entangled state but let us see what the ppt criterion tells us about it the density operator corresponding to this composite system would be equal to uh, half k 0 0 bra 0 0 plus k 0 0 bra 1 1 plus k 1 1 bra 0 0 plus k 1 1 bra 1 1 the important uh, point you have to uh, take note here is that this uh, zero belongs to a this zero belongs to a and similarly here this zero belongs to a here it belongs to sorry this belongs to b and this belongs to b here this zero belongs to in the second term this belongs to a this belongs to b and this belongs to a this belongs to b and so on right so if you keep track of this then taking the partial trace over that of b would simply interchanging the stuff belonging to a uh, b only without disturbing the uh, stuff belonging to a so if i take the partial tr uh, transpose if i take the partial transpose over that of b we'll have this first term would be easy because it's same so it would remain zero zero like this but if you look at the second term taking the partial transpose over b would interchange the uh, stuff belonging to bits basically qubits belonging to b so you will get zero one here and you here you will get one zero and in the third term you will get one zero zero one and in the fourth term it will remain the same because similar one 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 like this you will have this and this you can express in a density matrix form uh, in this way you can write it uh, the trick to write it in this form is this say the row uh, let me arrange the row this way zero 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 one one zero one one okay this is my row side and then column also i will arrange accordingly say zero zero uh, i will write it this is just a 
trick to remember 00011011 so now from this expression here from here i can write the matrix density matrix for the partially transposed uh, system would become uh, that matrix would become here the first term would become 1 0 0 0 as you can see second row 0 0 1 0 uh, and the third row would become 0 1 0 0 fourth row would be 0 0 0 1 now the question is is this partially transpose matrix is a valid density matrix to answer that you just have to find out the eigenvalues of row tb and to do that you have to form the characteristic equation let us do that quickly the characteristic equation would become a determinant of half minus lambda 0 0 0 0 minus lambda half 0 0 half 0 0 0 half minus lambda this is equal to 0 and thereby i'll be able to form this equation that would become a half minus lambda a half minus lambda and lambda square minus 1 by 4 is equal to 0 this will give me the eigenvalues as 1 half 1 half 1 half and minus half so as you can see this clearly means that eigenvalues are not all the eigenvalues are positive eigenvalues all eigenvalues are not positive right this is what it means and it implies that row tb is not semi positive definite what does it mean this means that row tb is not a valid density matrix so as per the ppt criteria this implies that that system a and b are the state is not separable and a and b are entangled so i hope you get the idea here this ppt criterion lead us to a simple entanglement measure called negativity negativity of a subsystem b negativity of a subsystem b is defined as it is uh, represented by the symbol italicized n capital n it's a function of the density operator rho is equal to trace norm over the partially transpose matrix of rho after taking the partial transpose over the subsystem b minus one divided by two where this trace norm of rho tb is equal to trace over the modulus of rho tb which uh, in fact means that it is taken the sum over the modulus of the eigenvalues of rho tb where lambda i are eigenvalues eigenvalues of rho tb now we can understand this uh, negativity concept very simply by uh, the this uh, example uh, that i have discussed just a few minutes back where we consider the composite system represented by the state vector 1 by root 2 k 0 0 plus k 1 1 and we have calculated the partial transpose over the uh, subsystem b and we found the eigenvalues of rho tb and the eigenvalues of rho tb were 
we calculated that eigen values of rho t b were calculated to be one half one half one half and minus one half therefore the negativity for the subsystem b can be calculated very quickly and this is trace norm over the over rho t b minus one by two which is uh, sum over the modulus of the eigenvalues divided by two because the eigenvalues we know we have to take the modulus so it would be one half plus one half plus one half plus one half minus one divided by two and this is going to give us one half so as you see that the negativity is non-zero and rho is not equal to zero here this implies that the subsystem the subsystem b is entangled entangled with subsystem a okay on the other hand if n rho if n rho negativity is zero this implies that and in fact it ensures that all eigenvalues or I, all eigenvalues of rho t b are non-negative non-negative thereby it means that the system a and b are not entangled sometimes this negativity is also called entanglement monotone negativity which is an entanglement measure is also one of the is also one of the negativity is also one of the entanglement monotones let me stop for today in this lecture we have learned about quantum entanglement measures and criterion von neumann entropy followed by the ppt criterion and negativity we will continue our discussion on entanglement measures in the next class thank you so much see you in the next class mm -hmm.